Morning men, start at 10, round the ball and back again. Hello and welcome. Today we are in the upcoming tier 10 Royal Navy heavy cruiser, the Goliath. She's still a work in progress, meaning that she is subject to change, and I have been given the ship by Wargaming for review purposes. Overall, I think this ship is something I don't really like that much. Because there are aspects of the ship that I do like, however, they're also... I don't like the playstyle too much, I suppose, because of certain details in the ship. I suppose part of the reason is that I have been playing the Venezia recently, and I just think that her playstyle is more fun than the Goliaths. At around the 10 to 11 minute mark, I'll be going over the ship in port, so we can go over lots of details and I'll explain some of the decisions I've been making, or I have made on the ship. But overall, I think the ship plays kinda like a mix between a Zao and a Hindenburg. I think somebody on Discord actually pointed this one out. I didn't agree at the time, but... As I've thought more about it, I think it's actually quite accurate, because most of the time you'll be playing the ship at long range. Now, she does have 234mm caliber guns, and the ballistics on these shells that you fire are actually really excellent. How? And 234mm caliber guns means that your AP can actually overmatch 16mm of armor. So ships like the Smolensk that you meet you can just overmatch those cruisers, which is amazing. However, because of the way the game plays and the maps are, quite often what I've found is that you have to be at range with these kinds of cruisers, because if you go closer, you are either the closest or one of the closest ships to the enemy battleships, and so the enemy will just focus fire you quite heavily. I mean, look at the minimap right now, right? Imagine if I had 17 km range, so I used the range upgrade which gives me 19.5 km range, but imagine if I didn't take that. If I wanted to fire at the enemy ships that I can see right now or were visible earlier, I would have to be a good 2 or 3 km closer. And that would mean that I would be the closest ship to the enemy, and I would be a cruiser. And it's a pretty huge cruiser at that, she sits really high on the water, meaning that lots of AP shells will deal a lot of penetration damage. Sure, she has a super heal and she does have 62,000 HP. The problem is that 62,000 HP with super heals is not really going to last you for a very long time against AP penetrations. It'll do well against, well, HE spam, let's say the Smolensk again, but it'll have a lot more trouble against, well, Kremlins. And Kremlins are rather common. And the thing is, the ship's bow is 25mm, it doesn't have like any kind of armor plates that get to the front, so at close range a battleship can just overmatch the bow. They probably won't hit your citadel too often, because it sits fairly low in the water at the front, but they'll likely get lots of penetration damage. On top of that, your side plates are 30mm, so Kremlins, for example, will just overmatch that, meaning that you're a giant target. They're not gonna citadel you probably out of the water, although they might because your citadel is actually quite huge too. You know, kind of something along the lines of the Brindisi actually. But... Enemy cruiser the damage just means that it'll stack up rather quickly. And if in a Venezia I could cl go close in, I can't really do that on this ship. And the thing is that I have 12.3 km concealment, which seems pretty terrible, but I'm not actually using the concealment upgrade, I'm using the rudder shift upgrade. Because I've found that you need to be able to dodge much more often than you need to be concealed. Besides, it's not like 11 km concealment is anything great anyway, so you can't really rely on it too much. Which, basically, if you add all of this together, you end up playing a lot like a mix between a Zao and a Hindenburg. You'll mostly stay at long range and just shell away with your HE. You'll use islands sometimes, you can't use them all the time because your shell arcs are too flat for that most of the time, but you can do it sometimes. So you'll just end up being far away shelling with HE, and then sometimes when the situation permits you'll go closer, you'll tap a base for example, which we're gonna do in a moment soon, and you can rush somebody down, you know, you can do stuff like that. But you can't really make it uh, a priority. You know, 
you can't really do super aggressive things like you can in the Venezia. I mean, right now we're doing something rather stupid. I'm actually very surprised that I'm not being heavily punished for this, but luckily the Kremlin to my left side didn't push, and the Montana and Yamata don't seem to be too intent on shelling me yet, which is very, very nice. She does have a Hydro, but this Hydro is actually fairly weak. It has 3km ship detectability and 3km torpedo detectability. Meaning that it's one of the weakest Hydros that I've actually seen. Especially on a cruiser. But I mean, it does its part, especially with the rudder shift upgrades. The, uh... Yeah, also, you just heard it, right? Jingles just said, we've sunk an allied destroyer. Um, he's a cheeky captain like that. And yes, that is Jingles as a captain. He is finally out. Which is obviously why I should use it. Look at that. Seven shell hits out of 12 and 16k with some penetrations. That's because two, 234mm caliber guns are very nice to use against stuff like Minotaurs. But take it against, I don't know, Kremlin here? I guess right now it's fine because this one has only 3000 HP, but a full HP Montana, you're not going to deal that much, even if you get rather close. And the same thing happens against uh, other ships that you can't just easily over okay never mind i take that back even right now that wasn't quite enough and i took 6k in return from that one turret and he didn't hit my citadel or anything that could have gone a lot worse anyway we're probably gonna be able to sink this minotaur here although i suppose i might get unlucky on some of the shells but that's not due to the guns that's more the angling etc I am willing to do this turn though, because while the armor isn't the greatest against battleships, against cruisers, the citadel armor is actually fairily decent. It's 203mm thickness, so it's fairly thick, and on top of that, it has spaced armor, meaning that small caliber guns are probably not going to citadel the ship too often. So against Smolensks and probably Minotaurs, you can be fairly fearless. So. These are some aspects that I like. I like the guns, I like the armor against uh, cruisers, but I don't like the armor against battleships. And I don't like how huge the ship is, I don't like the concealment on the ship. You know, all of this adds together into a situation where the playstyle is just not quite as fun for me. And that's what I don't really like about the ship. But of course, this could change, because remember, I've only played something like 20 games in her. So my opinion could easily change on the ship as I learn the ship more. Also, yeah, I've played 20 games. The ship has been out for like two days. Man, this Yoshino really is giving me freebies, huh? Five citadels just like that. That's half her HP gone. She actually has less HP than I do, but I do have survivability expert. Also, the super heal is also quite nice very often because you can just heal through some really stupid situations sometimes although the penetration damage again can kind of ruin things oh my god they're showing me broadside again did she just do that to launch torpedoes that's so dumb man oh and another thing i like about the ship the ap damage output is actually really high uh, that is the alpha damage. It's actually reminiscent of the Hindenburg. Come on. Come on, Minotaur. You know you want to catch these AP shells properly. Also, we're winning pretty hard at this point. I might have had some part to play in that. Okay, yes. Show me the broadside like that, please. She's trying to run away, but I don't think she'll go she's going to make it. And yep, and that's pretty much game, because we're at 995 points. So overall, I don't find the ship... The playstyle doesn't agree with me, but the ship doesn't feel weak, if I'm honest. And a nice game, 161k damage, two ships sunk, 11 citadels. That is quite nice. Assisted in a cap, 222, 221 XP. No, 2,221 base XP. That's a very good result. And here you can see what the penetrations etc. look like. It's The guns feel great. 
I really cannot complain about the guns, if I'm honest. I mean, look at that. AP, 96k damage, although I suppose the Yoshina did give most of that to me for free, but, you know, it's still something many cruisers might not have been capable of, at least not as well. But, yeah. The thing that miffs me is the fact that you're kind of helpless at close range against most battleships, and that that's sad. But I suppose if she was strong against battleships at close range, maybe she would actually be too strong, you know. It's hard to tell yet. I would have to see other players play the ship quite a bit. Because, you know, my own experience might actually be different. Maybe somebody has figured out a great way to play the ship. Maybe she's like super overpowered. Although I doubt it, but you never know. I guess the Goliath really is uh, an anti-cruiser cruiser. So, let's take a look at the uh, Goliath in port. She is a good looking ship, I think. Although a little boxy looking, I suppose, but... That is the style of the Royal Navy, it seems. Although, I'll be honest, I'm not quite a fan of this camo. I don't like the green at the bow. I prefer this camo much more, which is the Azur Lane camo that people keep asking me about. I think it's a really nice looking camo. Because it, well, looks cool, I suppose. Also, another thing, I'd like to know your opinion about this. Would you like me to have the port portion of the video? As a separate video instead, so I would put out two videos at the same time where it, one would be the match and the other one would be the port, or w do you rather prefer it being in one video as I've been doing it so far? I'd really like to know, so let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's get to the ship. Obviously the captain is the mighty Jingles, because that's the only logical one you can use in the ship. So, skill-wise I went with priority target, adrenaline rush, not expert marksman, but adrenaline rush then superintendent, then concealment expert. After this, I wasn't really sure what to go for because, well, you don't really need any of the other skills. They're nice to have, but not necessary. First, I went with survivability expert because I figured that since the ship has a super heal, boosting the HP give, makes the super heal even better, so maybe it's worth it. Besides, you don't really need basics of survivability anyway, and uh, yeah, the skills don't matter as much. Then I went with Expert Marksman because having faster turret traverse is always better. I mean, without it, it's around 20 seconds, or with it, it's like 17. So, you know, it's a boost of some kind. And last, I went with IFHE because you don't really need it, but IFHE allows you to penetrate 50 millimeters of armor, so you can penetrate the deck armor of ships like the Moskva, the Stalingrad, the Grossa Kofest, which can, you know, make the HE much more effective on the ship against certain targets. Obviously, unfortunately, you can't pen the deck armor of a Kremlin or a Yamato, but, you know, you can pen more than you could without it. So, upgrades-wise, I guess next... Actually, cons yeah, let's go with upgrades. The unusual thing is that I use the range upgrade. This gives you 19.5 km range. Now, you might be tempted to go reload, at least I tried it, but I didn't really like it. The shell, the shell arcs and characteristics are good enough, that range upgrade, in my opinion, makes sense. But the main reason why I went with range is because quite often I found myself in a situation where if I wanted to fire with the reload upgrade, I would have to be the closest uh, surface combat ship to the enemy, well, other than the destroyers, I suppose. Which meant that often I would be the one on the receiving end of quite many battleship shells, and the armor scheme on the ship simply is not very good at resisting it. And super heals aren't going to really help you out on that front, too much either. So I preferred the gun range upgrade. And consequently, I also went with steering gears instead of concealment. With concealment, you get around 11 km concealment range on the ship. Without it, it's around 12.3. But I think steering gears is worth it because the maneuverability on the ship is fine, but the rudder shift is kind of slow. With it, it's 6 seconds. And considering you're gonna be at long range quite often, I think this increased maneuverability actually wins out on the concealment because 11 km concealment isn't good enough to really do many things with anyway. Obviously I went with another steering gears because we want to boost rudder shift as much as possible. In the third slot I go for AA guns. You could go for dispersion but you know it's your choice. It doesn't really matter which one to go for. Second slot obviously I go for the hydroacoustic search one because you have a hydro upgrade right? Uh, if you don't have it, 
you would probably hydro consumable sorry if you don't have it you would go for damage control systems at least that's what i recommend i don't think the other two make much sense and last it's obviously main arm armaments modification because even with this the main batteries do get taken out quite often which is sometimes annoying consumables it's a standard cruiser damage control party then we have a super heal that heals for 14 and 90 hp per second for 20 seconds so you basically heal almost 30k hp with survivability expert that's basically half the hp of the ship this can boost you know the ship's hp quite by quite significant amounts however it does mean that you have to take light damage and your hp pull isn't the greatest so you're at least in practice unlikely to get full use of i would say 1.5 heals you're probably only get like 45k hp out of this or something because most of the damage you're gonna take is probably gonna be ap and then she has a not very good hydro it lasts for a long time 216 seconds but three kilometer torpedo detection and three kilometer ship detection is probably the worst or one of the worst hydros all at almost any tier actually not just tier 10 but i mean it helps you avoid torpedoes so it's something although against some torpedoes there's only limited effectiveness because shimakas at 20 kilometer torps have 2.5 kilometer detectability so you only win by 500 meters anyway let's take a look at the uh, stats of the ship now 62,100 hp with survivability expert is excellent it's much more than i expected and the torpedo belt protection at 28 percent is more way more than i expected guns 234 millimeter caliber this is the main thing that the ship has and this allows you to overmatch with ap uh 16 millimeters of armor so ships like the smolensk are absolute prey for the guns of the ship and she also has 50 millimeters of pen that we mentioned oh and the ap shells actually have high alpha damage 5500 is a lot torpedoes are fairly standard 10 kilometers 16k damage 62 knots and tire is pretty decent or at least numerically it's pretty decent standard priority target uh priority sector sorry long range is okay eight flak bubbles uh, middle mid range is 370 dps at 3.5 kilometers and short range actually adds another 230 so against die bombers this and higher is pretty damn good 35 knots 800 meter turning circle so it's slightly worse than the des moines and i suppose the venezia rudder shift is also slightly worse but i mean if you combine the two with the upgrade i went with it's a fairly maneuverable cruiser and then you get to 12.3 kilometer concealment range. With concealment upgrade, you would get it around 11 kilometers. Which isn't great enough for me to justify it. I think the rudder shift felt better. Let's take a look at the armor. 25 millimeter bow and stern as usual on the ship. 30 millimeter side plate, 40 millimeter deck armor. So... You can overmatch the bow of the ship fairly easily with AP and uh, if you take a look at from the front here you can see the citadel which is quite easily hittable but most often you'll just hit the athwart ship armor plate which just means you deal a lot of pen damage. Still that means your super heal isn't quite as effective as you would like to be. This side plate can bounce most uh, battleship AP and the deck plate can obviously bounce all the battleship AP. The main problem is this this bit right here sure it doesn't say citadel belt but the citadel is directly behind it as you'll see in a moment and there you can see the citadel right behind it sure it's spaced armor but i mean 203 millimeter citadel armor and 25 millimeter behind means that quite often you'll just go through this armor plate and then citadel the uh, goliath now it has one superbly nice use which is it absolutely neuters the AP from a Smolensk. Which makes this ship incredibly powerful against the Smolensk at close range. Because your guns absolutely devastate the Smolensk and uh, she can't do all that much to you. Even if you're showing some broadside. Which I suppose is something people were asking for. But I think um, in other aspects the ship doesn't quite live up to, well, defeating Smolensk that easily. But it can play its part. Overall, I, I'm kind of skeptical of the ship. 
in some ways. I like her. I like the shell ballistics. I like the fact that it devastates Smolensks. And I like the fact that against HE spam, this cruiser is very effective. On the other hand, I don't think those were really the main problems of cruisers. And, well, fighting battleships, I would rather be in most other cruisers, I think. Because the DPM on this just isn't the greatest. But it's nothing to, well, sneeze at. It's something you can definitely make work. So, I'll have to play more of the ship. Uh, because I'm really unsure how I feel about it so far. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, pointy-haired Jedi. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.